in about six hours. The second episode of Invincible Season 2 has so much character development and setup that it may require two viewings to fully appreciate it. Alternatively, you may watch Invincible Episode 2 once and then watch through our comprehensive summer to see everything we covered in this episode. When new episodes of Invincible Season 2 air on Thursdays, be sure to tune into our recap videos as well. We'll be discussing the most talked about scenes and offering our predictions for what could happen next. Graduation Day The episode begins with what many other series would have considered to be the show's climax. Mark Grayson and his pals received their high school diplomas. As the dean addresses the graduating class, Invincible engages in combat with his longtime adversary Doc Seismic. After getting lost in Season 1, Seismic found a race of lava monsters dwelling close to the Earth's core. Seismic is back, this time with his sinister plans to destroy the Lincoln Memorial as part of his environmental terrorism. He is stopped by Invincible, but not before the monument sustains major damage. Cecil believes that Mark still has a lot to learn. Mark returns in time to see the last moments of his own school graduation, but his excitement causes him to fling his cap too high. Title Screen The speech ends with the students being given the advice to be invincible, which is a traditional transition into the title screen, which features a second crack forming in the backdrop wall. Graduation Day Hangover Mark, his best friend William, fiancé Amber, and Adam Eve meet for a few post-graduation beers and talk about the future. While Eve is working to restore Chicago, William is going to relax, and Amber is interested in activism. Mark is unwavering in his commitment to Cecil and the GDA. Russ Livingston, the astronaut from Martians Among Us, is a Martian who returned unexpectedly from the Mars episode of Season 1 by changing into a human, but he's having trouble adjusting. Russ's NASA boss begins to inform him that he is being placed on involuntary leave. Nevertheless, the Martian, not knowing Earth culture, feels this may be the difference between life and death. Atomic Community Service Eve is using her abilities to reconstruct Chicago. Conflict arises between her rebuilding efforts and the local construction workers, who wonder if the work is up to code. A mother and her daughter support Eve's actions to make the neighborhood better. Eve goes above and above, transforming an empty lot into an opulent playground all before receiving a call from her parents. Mommy issues. Mark and Debbie are still raw about Nolan's treachery, with Debbie unhappy at a loose counter door, mended following Omni-Man's confrontation with GDA soldiers in the house. Recognizing their mutual suffering, Debbie tries to arrange a beach vacation for Mark's graduation, but he's actually spending time with Cecil. They fight about whether Mark has to be invincible thus much or whether he can still be simply an innocent boy. Debbie's attempt to convince Mark that he has nothing to prove in comparison to Omni-Man simply enrages him. Cecil uses a mission assignment to end their heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Guardians in training. Rex is tired of the Immortal putting a lot of training pressure on the Guardians of the Globe. Rex discovers that the Immortal is now in command of that as well as he tries to link up with Duplicate once more. Confusing. Russ problems. Russ Livingston is depicted as leading a really dull and scruffy existence in a cheap flat while consuming raw frozen pizzas. Russ receives an eviction notice from his landlord. But after watching a TV program about the Guardians of the Globe and their downfall, he feels inspired to become a superhero. Visiting the Dark Side Mark's next task is to look into a haunted area where reports of Darkwing sightings have occurred. Mark battles a doppelganger of Darkwing who is actually the insane former psychic of Darkwing, Nightboy. In order to protect the world from the threat of another renegade Viltrumite, he takes Mark into his cloak-style Night Realm and traps him. But, Invincible terrifies him by claiming to be Amon Man's son and winning the psychological battle. Elsewhere, Debbie ambushes Cecil overtaking Mark's childhood by pushing him into superhero service, and it breaks down into a brawl about whether Cecil genuinely trusts Mark. Mark won't be sent on any risky assignments, Cecil swears. Debbie is shocked to see Donald deliver Cecil a file because she witnessed Cecil struggle and die. Donald notices something is strange as Cecil escorts Debbie away, despite Cecil's best efforts to ignore it. Envy Atomic Adam when Eve gets home, her foster parents, her dad works at a fast food restaurant, disclose that they are struggling financially. Eve makes an effort to assist by producing a variety of valuable items they may sell. When her father declines to accept the assistance, Eve accuses him of being overly arrogant and leaves a golden apple for them. Cross-country lunch date Mark chooses to surprise Amber with lunch in the Paris Casino in Las Vegas, perched atop the Eiffel Tower, after noticing her working on political issues. Mark regrets not taking her to the actual Paris since the speed of the jet would have caused her skin to peel off. When Cecil contacts Mark on yet another errand, the lunch goes horribly wrong. While Amber acknowledges this, she cautions Mark not to allow the voice in his ear be the only one he hears. Invincible of Atlantis, Cecil summons Mark to pay the hero Aquarius, who is slain by Omni-Man, a debt. As Mark and the Queen are married, he finds that the Atlanteans are more interested in love than in battle. Mark attempts to say no by being monogamous, but Cecil forces him to do so. Lizard League vs. Guardians Cecil must contend with B-list antagonists he grudgingly sends in the Guardians to protect the Lizard League while the Atlantis operation is underway. The group spots an imposter of Rex battling the Lizard League, but it turns out to be Russ, 
who is now going undercover as the shape-shifting superhero the Shapesmith. He gets help from the Guardians to take care of the bad guys. Under Sea Challenge, Mark humiliates herself by attempting to tell the Atlantean Queen that he has a girlfriend. The Queen responds by telling him that she is not seeking a new king. Even though she governed the island for 10 years while Aquarius was a superhero, she is irritated that he believed them to be so primitive and old-fashioned. But then she reveals that it's really a trial by fight with a gigantic kraken monster. Give up. Domestic problems. Debbie attempts to re-enter the real estate market with Paul, her broker buddy. When Debbie remarks that the wife is not a pet and nearly incites a fight, the first couple they show the house to has an angry husband. Paul sends her home after determining that she isn't mentally stable enough to work at this point. Monster mayhem. Mark faces up against the Kraken, but it is stronger than he is and uses a sonic blast that damages Mark. To assist Mark escape, Cecil and the GDA try to use torpedoes as cover, but the monster's bonds are broken by the explosions, and it begins to rampage against Atlantis. In an attempt to show he is not his father, Mark defies an order to leave. He drives the Kraken into the ocean's depths, but he too is pulled below. Eventually, bruised but triumphant, Mark appears on a beach full of joyful holidaymakers. At the GDA, Cecil chastises Mark but acknowledges that the conflict with Atlantis was resolved when he saved the Queen. He gives Donald the command to record the sea monster's cry in order to potentially use it as a weapon against Viltramites. Cecil ducks the topic when Donald asks how Debbie felt about him. Adam, superhero wake-up call in the trash, Eve discovers the jewels she crafted for her parents. When she attempts to lecture her father about not becoming a poisonous man, her father ends up teaching her instead. According to a news report, Eve and her mother, who built the opulent park, were hurt when it collapsed because Eve disregarded some elements with her abilities, such as the ground foundation's instability and code violations, the project was never finished. The lesson is that having power may lead to individuals acting against their better judgment. Debbie feels sad. When the kitchen cabinet at the Grayson residence finally gives up, Debbie loses it and completely ruins the kitchen. When Mark discovers her crying on the ground, he attempts to console her, but she first rejects his efforts. As the shapesmith, Russ, the new guardian, is given a tour of Guardian's headquarters, but a montage of real-life incidents serves as a reminder that the Martian parasites known as sequids are still out there in the galaxy and are drawing nearer to Earth. Angstrom Lurkin. In a scene from the end credits, Angstrom Levy, played by Sterling K. Brown, pays a visit to a Mark variation, who tells how his Earth defeated Invincible and Omni-Man. Levy leaves the Invincible version to face punishment after obtaining the information, then departs into the universe once more. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.